So blood and marrow transplant program is uh, what commonly used to be called bone marrow transplant. Now we do most of these transplants from the blood, so we have expanded the name to include that fact. And commonly we call it blood and marrow transplant program. So there are two types of uh, transplants. For many patients, we can use their own stem cells. Stem cells are the cells that give rise to all the elements of the blood, the red blood cells, white cells, platelets. You can consider them as seeds, if you will. Uh, for some transplants, we can collect the patient's stem cells and freeze them and then the patient gets treatment with typically with chemotherapy with or without radiation and then we can give them their own stem cells back to, re to let their bone marrow recover. In many other types of transplant where the patient's bone marrow is damaged to such an extent that they cannot serve as their own donor, we use a stem cells from a donor. Oftentimes, the donor are their brother or sister, and that's our preferred approach. But if that is not possible, their brother or sister is not a match, other uh, donation sources can be utilized. To become a donor, again, if the donor is for a family member, oftentimes the patient will approach their family members and request them to be donor. But there is also an international registry. It's called Be the Match. And uh, people can volunteer to be, to be part of that registry. In that case, their name and information will be kept in that registry. And if they happen to be a match with a person in need for uh, bone marrow or stem cells, then they will be contacted. Now, to be a member of that registry, there are various ways. Uh, people can directly approach that registry. It's called Be the Match. It is available on the internet. And many times there are drives in our institution, for example, we set up drives where we seek, actively seek volunteers to be donors in that registry. And a person has to be committed to be a donor, but to begin with, all that is required of them is a swab of the inside of their mouth, which can be used for tissue typing, and that information stays in the registry database, and the person really does not have to do anything else. If they turn out to be a match for somebody, then they are contacted, and then they have to go through some more steps before they can actually donate. For the registry, what, what has been seen um, through research and experience is that a younger donor is the best donor for a patient. For that reason, the registry donation is capped at age 44 years, meaning you have to be between 18 and 44 to be able to donate. If you are donating for a family member, the requirements can be more flexible. Um, patients who are older than that age, sometimes in their late 60s or even early 70s, if they are otherwise healthy, may be a suitable donor for a family member.